Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about types of breaks, self-locking and self-energizing concepts of breaks. So these two topics we will be discussing in this video. So when we speak about the types of breaks, mainly we can categorize the break types into two types that is a drum break and disc breaks. So first we will discuss about uh, drum breaks. So when I speak about drum break means it may be internal expanding drum break <coughs> and external expanding drum break. Internal expanding brakes have brake shoes uh, which is contained within the brake drums and expand outwards to make contact with the rotating drum. So whereas uh, external expanding brakes uh, which is contract uh, to make a uh, contact with the rotating drum. And here you can able to see uh, you know like a, a brake drum and different parts we can able to see. So this is a brake drum and the brake band. So uh, here the number one number one is nothing but brake drum that is the outer uh, you know like the circle what you can able to see this is nothing but brake drum. And second one is nothing but the cam mechanism. We can able to see this is the cam mechanism. And third one is nothing but the brake lining. So in between the brake drum and the uh, what is that? Uh, a cam mechanism. Uh, the brake lining we can able to see. And over the cam, uh, you know, like the line circle only, the brake lining is made. And uh, next one is nothing but <coughs> uh, return springs. So return springs you can able to see. This is the return spring. Uh, return spring. This is the you know like. Uh, uh, the sawtooth kind of thing, a uh, helical spring, we can able to, this is the return spring. And fifth one is nothing but the anchor pin. So this is the anchor pin which is common. And uh, this is applicable for both uh, internal expanding, external expanding. This is for the internal and this is for the external. I'm just, ex I'm just talking about uh, the major components. Uh, fifth one is the anchor pin. But in case of the external expanding, we don't have the anchor pin. You can able to observe only in external, internal expanding, the anchor pin is there. So sixth one is nothing but uh, fixed wheel cylinder. So this is the fixed wheel cylinder and even it is common in uh, uh, both uh, uh, internal expanding. It is a fixed wheel cylinder. So this is the fixed wheel cylinder. This is the sixth one. And uh, seventh one is nothing but shoe adjuster. So this is the shoe adjuster. You can able to see this is the shoe adjuster. So almost internal external it looks almost similar. But in case of the external we will be having a. Uh, uh, two return springs and even uh, we will not be having uh, uh, these kind of uh, shoe adjuster in case of the internal which has a very external it has. So moving to the brake drum materials. So brake drums are made of uh, nickel iron castings and this metal gives uh, optimum rate of heat transfer and provides a good uh, anti wear qualities. So scooter and motorcycle brake drums are made of cast aluminium with a bonded uh, cast iron liner. The linings have a high temperatures of about 3500 degrees Celsius without uh, distortion and are made of asbestos based material having high coefficient of friction 0.4. Uh, the different lining materials are molded pulp, compressor fabric and woven. And moving to the disc brakes. So disc brakes you can able to see like all the parts let me show it here. The first one is nothing but the you know like the dark color pipe. This is nothing but connecting tube. Second one is nothing but cylinder. So this is the connecting tube and this is nothing but cylinder. You can able to see both the sides. We can able to see the release in the applied cases. But anyway the same sketch only. Second one is the cylinder. And the third one <coughs> is the piston. So this white color block is there. No this is the piston. And fourth one is the friction pad. So this is the friction pad. After the cylinder whatever the shaded part is there. No so this is the friction. In release you can able to see. Uh, the friction part, uh, friction pad is uh, uh, not having any contact, but when this applied, means the friction pad is having contact. And fifth one is nothing but uh, hydraulic uh, fluid. You can able to see this hydraulic fluid which is filled inside this connecting tube. And the sixth one is nothing but uh, brake disc. So this is the brake disc. And the seventh one is nothing but uh, from master to cylinder. So uh, from uh, usually like wherever the application we are looking for, from that place we call it as a master to the cylinder. And the eighth one is nothing but uh, caliper. <coughs> So this is the caliper which is completely covered over this setup. This is nothing but caliper. This is the brick disc brakes. So the major components we can call it as a disc calipers friction pads. So disc means usually it is made of a high grade of a gray cast iron having a pyrolytic uh, uh, structure to give better wear resistance property. And the disc disc uh, which rotates with the car wheel is efficiently cooled as most of its area lies exposed. And moving to the calipers, uh, these are the V-shaped type and are in uh, two halves. Uh, each half has a pad bonded to a steel plate. 
a steel piston and a brake cylindrical housing bolted together. So both these halves are uh, hydraulically linked so that equal pressure may be applied on the pad uh, through floating pistons. Hydraulic pressure is applied only on one side of the pistons. And friction pads, these are the made of uh, asbestos, fiber and metal oxide fillers bonded with organic compounds. And each pad is fixed to a steel plate that has to take torque during uh, breaking onto the caliper. So the pads may be of square, rectangular, oval or segmental in shape. The size of the piston is made the same as that of pads to avoid noise during breaking. And rubber sealing rings prevents dust and moisture to enter the piston housings. So working of the disc brake. So when the driver applies pressure on the brake pedal, hydraulic pressure pushes the pistons out from their housing. Uh, the pistons in turn press the brake pads against the moving disc faces causing friction and hence slowing it down. Hydraulic pressure is equally applied by the hydraulic fluid to the floating pistons on either side. So when the driver takes his foot off the brake pedal, hydraulic pressure on the friction pads is released. So the pistons move inwards and break their contact with the disc. So advantages of the disc brakes over drum brakes. So disc brakes provide better stability since these have uniform pressure distribution over the pads than that of the brake linings in the case of the drum brakes. Increased temperature does not affect the disc pads uh, much compared to the brake linings of the drum brakes. So the design of the brake adjusters becomes simple because when hot the disc expands towards the pads causing no loss in pedal travel. Uh, maintenance and repairs of the disc brakes is easy. And disadvantages are disc brakes assemblies are costlier than drum brakes. The pads wear off fast compared to brake shoe linings of drum brakes. Disc brakes have higher brake pressures. Complete protection to the disc from the road residue is provided with great difficulty. The high temperature operation of the disc brakes causes evaporation of the brake fluid and weakening of seal. In the case of car fitted with disc brakes, an external servo mechanism is required because these have no self energizing effect. Such an arrangement is not required in cars having drum brakes. Hand brakes can be installed on drum brakes because these have self energizing effect. Disc brakes offer difficulty in installing hand brakes. And moving to the next topic, where in the disadvantages we discussed about a self energizing and a self locking brake. So, self energizing and self locking brake means I can go with this relation Rn into x, which is equal to Pl plus mu a Rn, where Rn is nothing but normal reaction and P is nothing but uh, applied force where L is nothing but uh, lever length and X is nothing but uh, distance of block from hinge and mu is nothing but quotient of friction and small a is nothing but distance of uh, drum from hinge. So I will be equating a uh, normal pressure into distance of block from hinge which is equal to applied force into lever length plus quotient of friction into distance of drum from hinge into the normal reaction. So in this particular equation when the frictional force add to the braking torque. So in other words the frictional force and the braking torque are in the same direction then it is a self-locking brake. So in the same equation, if uh, the x value, that is the distance of the block from hinge, if it is less than product of mu a, then P becomes negative, obviously. So hence, P is not required for braking and brakes gets applied on its own and it is called as a self-energizing brake. So this is the concept. And in simple words, if you want to remember, means always for all the vehicles, self-energizing brakes is required. It means when uh, some uh, effort is applied uh, to control the vehicle, then uh, you know like we will be applying uh, some uh, load on the brake pedal and in turn that is uh, making uh, you know like uh, other, that is transmitted to the brake shoes. In turn it will directly we will make a physical contact with the rotating wheels or brake wheels so that the vehicle gets stopped. This is nothing but self energizing. Normally uh, it is happening. But what in uh, what do you mean by self locking means? As we discussed, there will be some mild gap between the brake shoe and the wheel. So the mild, uh, there will be some, you know, like a mild friction between always this brake shoe and the brake wheel. So uh, without applying any effort, uh, only the friction will be responsible for com completely stopping the vehicle means or completely reducing the speed means. Then that is called as a self-locking brake. But usually self-locking brake is not recommended because uh, it will not help in the critical situation. So only self-energizing is recommended. Thank you.